on a rough day for the averages. Let's not forget that the individual companies themselves still matter here, and some of them are doing quite well. For example, I think the resurgence of many bricks and mortar retailers is one of the great underappreciated themes of this market. However, there's some changes that appear to be sitting this one out, at least for the moment, even as they shouldn't be. Take The Gap, which also owns Banana Republic, Old Navy, and Athleta. Here's a stock that roared higher last year. It's up more than 50% as the rest of the cohort was kind of left for dead. But this year, as a apparel has caught fire, the gap is language. It's down 9% for 2018. So what's going on here? Are investors simply circling back to the laggards, or has something changed to make the story less attractive? We know the gap reported a very strong quarter at the beginning of March, with fabulous same-store sales growth up 5%. We were only looking for 1.6%, including a 9% bump for Old Navy. Now, earlier today, we got a chance to sit down with Art Peck. He's the president and CEO of The Gap at Matt Boss's J.P. Morgan Retail Conference. Take a look. Bart, I've got to tell you, I'm honored because I am with the best apparel retailer in the business that perhaps no one's ever heard of. When you talk about the number that you had for Old Navy and why it was the standout in the whole, in the whole country. Well, I'm honored to be here as well. Um, and I like most of what you just said, except no one's ever heard of it. So, <laughs> well, I just think which is why we're here today. They've never heard of the number. They've never heard of the number. They know the brand. Yeah, yeah. How did no, you do it's it? a pleasure to be here. You know, we've, we've been talking now for a while about what I call the balanced growth strategy. And what it really is, it's about, first of all, the portfolio of great brands that we have. These are amazing brands. Customers know them. Everybody knows Gap all around the whole world. You've got Old Navy, which is a killer brand, Banana Republic, and then you know our, our upstart brand, which is growing super fast, which we've talked about, which is Athleta in the performance lifestyle space. So it sits on a portfolio of great brands, and then we're managing the inside of this company to really move with how the consumer is moving, moving towards the athleisure or performance lifestyle, moving away from real estate where she's not shopping anymore, mm-hmm. and just and really evolving as the consumer evolves. And you know, retail used to be kind of a set piece game. You built stores. I've really been talking a lot about, I want to soften up our asset base so that we have flexibility, so that we're nimble, so that we can move fast as our customer moves and shops in different ways. Well, you're an upfront guy. You talk about actually being in the wrong stores and the need to be able to get out of the wrong stores. How much of this is informed by big data? We've really been building back-end big data analytic capabilities now for a couple of years. And, you know, data is, a, data is a huge asset for us. It's surprising to me that more people in our space are talking about it, and especially with us, two billion visits a year between our online and our stores. We know a lot about our customers. We can see their lifetime value. We know who our most valuable customer is. And so being able to extract that data, and then, because you know we spend a lot on marketing, and it's all about traffic and getting traffic across the lease line, being able to direct our marketing spend really effectively down a return on ad spend curve so that we know what the returns are using that big data against our best customers. It's a huge asset. And structurally, because we have multiple brands and multi-channels, we've got something not a lot of other apparel companies have. So when you have good big data, what does it mean uh, in terms of what you can get a customer to uh, spend? Yeah, so if if you look at the difference between a customer who's casually engaged and one who is really deeply engaged in our brands across channels, it's at least 10 times the value of that Ooh. customer. Because you know they're buying, if it's a mom, she's buying for herself, she's buying for her family, she's probably working out, so she's buying in the active space. If she has a career, she's buying professional clothing as well. And so there's a, there's a real value to what I call, it's not, people talk share of wallet, that's mm-hmm. kind of clinical. To me, it's share of life. We have a portfolio of brands that allows us to really participate in his and her and the family's life in a way that a lot of other companies can't. And you can't just fix that overnight. If you're a mono brand, you're a mono brand. All right, well, one of the things when I listen to you, I say to myself, okay, I don't want financial engineering, but the amount of money you have spent buying back stock, your, th- your stock price is the same as it was five years ago. You had 533 million share count, now 389. I want you to spend on Athleta. I don't care about, it's like good tasting tuna versus tuna with good taste. I don't <laughs> care about a share buyback. I want you to blow out this, the concept. You're doing plus 20% on Athleta. It would change the whole way you I value the stock. And what I would say is, you know, we've upped our CapEx, so we signaled that last time. We're now spending at the level of about $800 million a year. It's a big number. Okay. Um, we obviously noted the fact that we got some advantage with the tax laws, which we're appreciative of. But 
Uh, we are disciplined and we are focused. And so the two constraints on spending, number one, I want to make sure I can deliver the return on invested capital. That's super important for our investors. It's super important okay. to spend that money there. And secondly, any company, and if you ever hear opposite, you're, you know, they're not telling you the truth, any company has management capacity. And so what we uh, try to do every day is spend to an ROIC number and spend to the capacity of the organization to execute. And I've been big about focus. So I agree, um, we will always be disciplined in returning excess cash to our shareholders. We always will. But management's job, operating management's job, first and foremost, is to, profit, is to invest in profitable growth. Okay, uh, one of the things that I've seen you uh, do better than most is uh, targeting the right people, which means using the social media. Now, social media is in the news in a different way. I don't really care about that. What I think is, in terms of reaching customers, isn't it the best? Uh, our ad spend, our marketing spend, of working media has pivoted massively away from traditional media outlets and much more towards social media, whether that's um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. It's super effective for us. Also trackable online media, where we're placing media ads in your click stream is another place where we're spending. And the cool thing about it, many cool things, but one of the cool things about it as a business person is I can look down the pipe and see what our return is. So if I'm getting a 6x or an 8x return on my advertising spend, I might say I want to spend down to a 3x return and I'm still getting an incremental return on that dollar. It's hard to do that in a lot of the traditional media. Right, so I would presume Instagram, of course, uh, uh, owned by Facebook, natural place for you to be. Correct. And it's working. And it's working. Well, yeah, and I know that you can track exactly how it's working, which is something you can't do. Excellent in line of sight to returns. Okay, so let, let's talk about something. You beat yourself up too much. Can I just tell you that? I mean, around two, I've read too many comp schools. But you, you say you're not fast, uh, fast forward, and, uh, fast fashion enough. But people don't understand that. Can you explain yeah. to people where you're going in terms of fast fashion? Sure. So I would actually tease apart fast and fashion. Okay. Okay. Fast to me is table stakes, and it will be going forward for an apparel company. Um, with global logistics networks, using air transportation, using data, exchanging files back and forth, that has all created opportunities to speed up the product pipeline. Traditional pipeline is probably 40 some weeks from thought bubble over a designer's head really? to in store. And you know, we're now in a place in parts of our business, and frankly, it is what is fueling Athleta and fueling Old Navy. Athleta, it's bottoms complex, which is the core of the business, mm -hmm. pants. Um, eight to ten weeks from I have an idea to I got product on the shelf. And that's super important because number one, you can start to de-risk your buy by having better information about what the customer wants, whether it's print, pattern, silhouette, ankle treatment, or whatever it is. Number two, in an environment where traffic is flat to negative overall, not for us, because right. we have positive traffic, but flat to negative, you're not going to buy to a positive unit number preseason, but we can feed units in season to fuel the kind of growth that you're seeing at Athleta. And that's unit growth, because Athleta is a clean reg price business. Okay, well, so we, we put all the real estate investment trusts that are involved with retail on. Uh, there are good malls, not wrong, but actual good malls, good centers uh, that have vacancies. Are, are we going to see Athletas more than that? Because you do not have enough Athletas. We have about 140 stores right now. The business um, is about 50-50 direct to consumer, okay. online, and in stores. Um, we're going to continue to build stores at a responsible rate. You know, Athleta is really, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's super cool for a number of reasons, not the least of which is most retail came from physical and went online. Athleta came from online and catalog and is going physical. And we're very focused on making sure we're building the retailer of the future. The other thing I just want to just point out about Athleta, and I think we will, someday you and I will be talking a few years from now, and we'll look at this as a, as a moment of the brand that consumers want in the future. So, B Certified Corporation, Athleta just announced that they are. That's a values issue that our customers are super responsive to. The engagement in that brand is amazing, and that's what consumers are looking for today. I don't care if it's a millennial or a 70-year-old woman. She sees that as a brand that she can relate to from a value standpoint, and it's a really powerful equation. I right, well, just want to circle back from the last minute. Uh, how did you do a 9% comp for Old Navy? What was the secret there? Uh, you got to start with great products. Okay. So I've been unfairly branded as anti-creative. Um, I haven't need, done that, too. You haven't done that. <laughs> I just want to get rid of it once and for all. You need amazing creative talent, and we have amazing creative talent. So it starts with great product that is on trend. 
The value equation in that business is, I mean, it's known, customers love it at the end of the day. We're consistent and disciplined in the underlying operations. Great marketing that's driven really positive traffic trends. You put that all together and you have a business that's gaining market share. And that's what we're all about right now is profitable market share growth. Well, I like that. Art Peck, Gap President and CEO. Thank you so much for sitting Thank you so us. much. Thanks for having me. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.